The Saints' stay in Missouri disintegrated quickly between the summer of 1838 and the beginning of 1839. By early October, the so-called Missouri Mormon War had begun. The Mormons organized and began to defend themselves. Violence continued. Some Mormons went on the offensive and waged a type of guerrilla warfare in Davies County, Missouri. Elder David W. Patton, a member of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, was killed in a skirmish at Crooked River. Two days later, Governor Lillian Boggs issued the infamous extermination order stating that the Mormons must be treated as enemies and exterminated or driven from the state of Missouri. In January 1839, Joseph was incarcerated in Liberty Jail, and Brigham Young organized a committee on removal to systematically move the saints out of the area. After exploring their options, plans were made to settle in Commerce, Illinois, later renamed Nauvoo. Within months, eight to 10,000 saints migrated to Western Illinois. For the first couple of years or so, Nauvoo was a respite from persecution. It gave Joseph Smith an opportunity to think about theology and the implications of what the Lord had revealed to him. The emphasis had been on the fundamentals of Christianity, faith, repentance, baptism, the gift of the Holy Ghost, and missionary work, and the development of the organization of the church. Now that the church was organized and established, quorums in the church were taking more of the day-to-day -day responsibility for operating the church. Joseph had time to think and explore ideas. A flowering of theology took place. The big question for this period was, how are we saved? During the Nauvoo period, it became clear that the restoration of the gospel not only meant going back to the basics of the gospel as it was taught by Jesus, but it also entailed adding back in ideas and concepts that had been lost altogether and in some instances were scarcely mentioned in the New Testament. Distinctive doctrines were introduced that set Mormonism apart from the other Christian denominations. Joseph taught that God had a body and completely rejected the traditional idea of the Trinity. He said that God was married and that there was a mother in heaven. From this union, spiritual offspring were born and lived with heavenly parents in a pre-mortal life. Even more astounding to outsiders and even those in the church was Joseph Smith's teaching that God was once a man and that over time, all men and women on this earth can become like their heavenly parents. Since men and women may become gods and goddesses, it followed that there are multiple gods who work cooperatively with one another to nurture and move forward their heavenly offspring. Furthermore, Joseph said that matter or the elements are eternal and have always existed. Therefore, men and women have always existed in some cognizant form and are co-eternal with God. The endowment and the temple ordinances for the living and the dead were introduced. This period of relative calm and thoughtful discourse would not last long. Once again, persecution raised its ugly head. Joseph was murdered and the saints left Nauvoo and were forced further west to settle in the Great Basin Kingdom in Utah.